Hi, my name is Chris Reeves with Triac Systems, and uh, welcome to uh, Pushing Forward Season 2. And I want to do an introduction of a personal friend of mine. There's a handful of people that were been with Triarch, uh since before its inception and been there since the inception. So, Darren, uh, yeah, just give a tell us about yourself and so, let uh, people know. Absolutely. Um, Darren Houston, uh, I work for Bear County Sheriff's Office. I've been employed there for approximately 27 years. Uh, throughout my career, I've done extensive things, uh, specialized units, of course, uh, SWAT, gang unit, uh, warrants, you name it, those type of things, uh, narcotics. Currently employed in narcotics at, at this particular time. And uh, that's pretty much all I'm, I'm doing at this moment. And then, of course, uh, messing with Chris on, on all his stuff and, and uh, trying to put uh, good stuff out to uh, other law enforcement agencies as well as a representative. With all the different things you've done in the department, what is some ways you prep? Because I know you've you transitioned to many different roles as narcotics, uh, human trafficking, right. um, you know, gang unit. Right. So what were some of the different things you, how you meant to prepare yourself and what was different about each? <clears throat> well, like you said, each particular job is a different mindset. I hate to use that cliche, but it is, you know. So I have to prepare by knowing what I'm getting ready to go into, meaning if I'm going into human trafficking, I have to go to that mindset of talking to females at different different ranges, right? And how to get them to express what I need to know in order to go after the bad guy and get those those people uh, taken care of. Now, when we go into the narcotics portion of it, again, depending on whether I'm in an undercover capacity or if we're hitting houses, mm -hmm. two different ways of, of uh, mindsets again. Yeah. Um, of course, the undercover part is just as dangerous as hitting the location, but a little bit more personal, mm -hmm. right? Up close and personal. So mindsets on each one of those, totally different. And um, also, I know throughout the years, you know, just conversations, I know we both uh, just been talking about uh, work and things like that, but I know just like with your job, it can be stressful, can, you know, wear you down a little bit. And that's, that's a always, hard, yeah, yes. yeah, all that. <laughs> Bro, I got it on the side of my head too. Right. Uh, but the, the whole thing is like, how do you keep from not being complacent? Cause it's just, it's, it's tough. And uh, that's kind of like what we talk about in pushing forward. Like, how do you keep yourself? Going? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. you're, you're absolutely right about that. Uh, complacement is, is danger in, in this particular uh, uh, job. Um, whether you're in patrol or wherever else you are in the law enforcement, a career but if you get into just a everything's going to be okay and then you meet that that time when it's not okay then now you you're behind the court the curve so now you got to catch up which is which is bad for business and speaking of business you know there's good days and bad days and yes, uh, you know uh, you know describe obviously one of your worst days you've had and um, how the recovery was absolutely so <clears throat> it was a couple of days after the towers went down um, they shut us down for a couple of days. We had five or six warrants that particular day. And that, that day, mine was the last. And so this was a person that I had been watching for you know a week or two, building the case on him. So we all plus up, uh, search warrant signed, get ready to execute the search warrant, uh, make entry, getting ready to, go to make entry to the residence. Um, I had the shield. Back then, the shields had the little small glass ports. They're not huge like that. You know. Yeah. So they had those little small glass ports, and it was a little hard to see, a little difficult to see through. So I make entry through the door. Um, as soon as I get one or two steps in, I hit something, so it made me go like this and lift that shield up. So as soon as I did that, I looked down, I saw the couch, and the bad guy came out into the hallway. He torched off a couple rounds as I yelled gun, and we got into a gunfight. He hit me once. Um, I hit him, I walked him up from the leg, the side, and uh, I think it was the shoulder mm -hmm. as well. A uh, little gunfight in there inside this this small little house. It's you know yeah. gunfights are within five to ten feet. You know, mm -hmm. um, I went to the right because it started burning, right? Yeah. And I was thinking, oh shit, I'm paralyzed. You know, because it was burning bad, 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 bad. So then something said, hey dude, you got to get up, man, and, and go find that dude pushing forward. Right? Yeah. Proned out, started torching off a couple more rounds down the hallway. Gather my thoughts, reload it, got back up, and then I went into search mode, right? So I'm looking for him because I didn't see where he went after I shot him because I went to the right to try to get off yeah. the X, right? So you get up, everybody's outside, I can hear him, where's Darren, where's Darren? And I'm in there searching, I'm looking for this dude, and by then my team's coming in, right? Yeah. So I go into the bedroom where I thought he went, uh, retreated to, uh, and I can hear everybody in the kitchen, in the kitchen area, and that's where he was. He had he tried to go out the back, went into the kitchen area, so... By then, I'm coming back out, and I'm looking for him, too, because now in my mind, 
I, I want revenge. You know, yeah. it's not the right thing to say, but I'm looking to get payback. So we go back in there. He's already down. He's bleeding. Um, they get me out, pull my stuff off, and that was that was the day. Yeah, yeah. So I spent uh, probably about maybe about a week um, at Bamsey, uh, yeah. the trauma hospital here. Uh, excellent doctors, excellent nurses. They took care of me, 100 percent. Uh, whatever I needed, they took care of me. You know what I mean? Um, finished that up, got sent home, and started the recovery process. Okay. Which was difficult. You know, that's very handy. difficult. Yeah. So what they did was, you know, they cut me all the way open, pull all my intestines out, had yeah. to go inch by inch, all that good stuff to make sure everything was good. And then they just stuffed them back in, zipped me back up, yeah. and my my stomach was horrible looking. Yeah. You know? So I was like, hey, Doc, can you fix this? He's like, no, you're good. It'll go back. You know what I mean? Don't worry about it. Yeah. I'm like, because, Doc, you know, this doesn't match this. You know what I mean? <laughs> so anyway, uh, long story short, yeah, the recovery process was was a little difficult um, being laid up and not being able to, to get back out there with the guys and, yeah. and do stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And, yeah, recovery is always tough. Right. It's, um, it's a mental game. Absolutely. You know, and, you, and the hard part is you have to relax because, you know, you don't want to hurt yourself even worse. And right. It's very tough. Yeah. Um, and so how did your, just within your unit, how did your tactics change? Anything come of that? Because usually, you know, that's kind of, you learn from experiences like that. Absolutely. So speaking of tactics change, more research, more data. First of all, thinking what happened, what did I do wrong was the first process, right? And I kept going through that in my mind, going, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? And talking to the other guys, what did I do wrong? And everybody's like, you didn't do anything wrong. He had just pushed that that couch and you didn't see it because you had the shield, right? So then we started the process of looking for more equipment to change things out, getting yeah. better, you know, equipment and all that kind of stuff. So the training uh, went to going into smaller houses, negotiating hallways, smaller rooms, you know, how to um, um, effectively go inside and take care of a small room, right? Yeah. And do stuff like that. And that was over and over and over and over and over. And not to not to include that, but in my mind as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then at home when I was good enough to walk around, I was doing the same thing, going over that same scenario in my mind, you know? Yeah. And then I would bring it to the guys and then we work out how to try to fix that. Yeah. yeah. Twenty seven years, that's a pretty extensive career. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Let's just say you're in the game. <laughs> right, right. Um what are some of the things when you first start out, if you can go back, that you would have learned or you would have liked to learn when you first started your career? Well, that's a good question. Yeah. The first things that I would like to have learned when I first started my career. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just like some people who are just starting now, you can kind of give them some pointers of, you know, hey, when you start your law enforcement career, this right. is something that I wish I would have done. Probably um, pay more attention. Okay. First of all, you got to listen to the older guys who have been out there doing the job constantly, constantly, constantly. Um, yeah, they're not the end all be all all the time. And yes, there are new ways of doing things. But the base has been established with those older guys that have been out there on the road and doing these things over and over and over constantly. So when they try to share that with you, you should listen to it and then dissect it. Take the data from it that you like, add it to what you have, and then press on from there or push forward from there. Good. Yeah. So another thing, time. I know we we never have time and uh, <laughs> right. find time to train. That's one thing. Like every time we we find time to hang out and we want to train, we end up drinking uh, and eating steaks. So um, by the way, we're that's where we're going next. Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we have to go. Right. Um, but uh, so but we get time to train. Right. Um, it's very hard. But as far as your schedule, how do you find and what's some advice you can give to people? Uh, like I said, it's it's something that uh, uh, there's a lot of law enforcement officers that, that make the time. And right. so how do you make your time? So this is what I do to make my time. Um, what I do is I start thinking as soon as I pull in my driveway, what could possibly happen when I go inside? Because when you get home, you don't know if somebody's already broken into your into your house or whatever the case may be. So my process is to let's start thinking What's going to happen when I get inside? What's out of the ordinary? That's how the brain starts working, mm -hmm. right? So I'm, my mind is doing this 100 miles an hour, boom, 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 going, going, going. And so that's what I apply to my training. So when I go into the house, even though I don't have a gun in my hand, I'm thinking I got a gun in my hand. I'm looking down the, clock, down the hallway this way, checking to my left. What am I going to do if I need to go punch in there and clear that room? I do that on a regular basis. That, that never stops, never stops. Wow. When I'm in the bathroom taking a shower, whatever the case may be, I hear that boom, 
what do I do? Where do I yeah. go from here? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Right. A lot of people. Right. I mean, they're always at your house. Yep. I mean, it's just. Right. Uh, it's interesting. A lot of people take the house as being the the, the sanctuary. You know, it, mm -hmm. at one time it was. You know, nobody would come in your house and, yeah. and bother you like that. But these days are different. You know, mm -hmm. you'd be in your bed, sleep, watching TV, you're on your couch, and they're kicking in the front door. Right. Yeah. Where's your gun? What are you gonna do? What's the process? You know. And so, I'm sure you've seen a lot of. Uh, Cases like that in, in this Absolute. area, something that Absolute. Absolute similar that happens. Right. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting times. Yeah. You know? Very interesting. interesting. Yeah. So another thing that uh, I, I forgot to mention earlier is that you also do is executive protection. Right. And uh, you tell us a little bit about that, and if anybody's kind of interested in that, uh, kind of how you got into it, or um, I know we plan to do some drills here, here today to show that kind of stuff. But uh, executive protection—that's a whole other. Uh, yeah, that's a whole other ball of wax. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Whole nother ball of wax. So on the protective details, um, what's good about the protective details, if you're gonna start getting into that career, the first thing you should do is go outside, go to the malls, go to restaurants, just go somewhere different and start people watching. Go to parks and watch people, how they move, how they walk, how they dress, if they limp, all these kind of things play into the protective world and the, and the detail portion, right? So you'll start recognizing those things when there is a threat or there isn't a threat or something is about to happen. So, you know, you're already ahead of the game. It's always to be pushing forward yeah. and be ahead of the game, right? So what you want to do is get, again, get out there and start people watching. That's the basis of it. Before you can do anything else, you need to start people watching, right? So then from there, from there then you start getting into your training, your mm -hmm. classes, right? So you're already ahead of it because you, you've already people watched. And then when you go to the class and you get that training, and they start talking about it, you're like, okay, I've got this, I know how to apply it, right? So <clears throat> then comes all the, you know, the positioning, where are you gonna be at, what number are you, how are you gonna move, where are you gonna take them, and all these other pre-planning and, and all this other stuff goes into accordance with uh, protective yeah. details, yeah. That's a, that's, a, that's a big, big ball of wax because it's not just your principal mm -hmm. in this particular job like it would be if you're on patrol, I know I gotta get in that car and I gotta go in my district, right? Anything can happen. Same thing on a protective detail, but there's other things that play into that portion of protective details. Yeah. Right. That's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, you yeah. do everything. Yeah. <laughs> the gray beard, man, I'm telling you. Yeah. Um, so, like I mentioned earlier, um, you know, Darren is, man, was it 2000, I want to say 2009 or, gosh, man, yeah. we did that uh, little plate carrier deal. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. so that was. Uh, that's right. Yeah. That was a long time. A long, um, long time. And uh, so when Triax first started, you know, bootstrapping it and um, had a limited funds to buy certain kind of parts. And and uh, I remember buying the first eight receiver sets for the company and going to manufacture the rifles. And uh, Darren was one of the mm -hmm. first people to buy one. He's always trusted uh, into uh, the company and uh, very grateful. But uh, how's that rifle doing today? Man, I still got that <laughs> rifle sitting over there on the table. Yeah. And, and, and I, I don't want to say I can't wait to put it up on the wall and marvel it, yeah. you know, because I marvel it anyway. But when when it's time to, you know, yeah. retire, yeah. that thing's going on the wall. It's going to have lights on it. It's, <laughs> it's, it's going to be beautiful. I, believe yeah, me when I, I tell you that. It. And then I'm going to buy another yeah. one. To, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, you, well, hopefully, uh, let's uh, we'll, we'll talk uh, during the uh, next session. And, absolutely, uh, absolutely. You know, but I think it's about time. It's, yeah. You know, yeah. it's she's, coming up on there. Yeah, she's done well, very, very yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. very well. Man, it's amazing. And and. I think we've only had one issue with it, but it was probably user error that one time, and, and it's been running since day one. Yeah. yeah. Since day one. There's been no issues yeah. with that thing. All we did was change out the guard, the handrails. Yeah, that handrail, was it. Yeah. yeah. That was it. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> Man, that rifle. Yeah. That's, that's uh, it's a beautiful thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, and so, you know, I mean, we... We share common, uh, you know, always working late, always stressed, um, mm -hmm. you know, and that's one thing uh, throughout the years is, is there's always that mutual respect. And I know we're both busy, but uh, right. that whole thing pushing forward. I mean, it's yeah, it's it's life, man. It is. I mean, it's it is. You got uh, so how how do you apply that to your day to day? <clears throat> Just like mental part, because you know, even getting up early for this stuff, you know, that's the first thing I woke up when I got in my head. I was like. Fuck, pushing forward, <laughs> get out, get off the bed, and you have to, yeah. Absolutely. So, you know, when I got up this morning after doing a long day yesterday, you know, with narcotics and getting search warrants signed late into the evening, and when you called, I saw that number, I'm like, I don't want to answer this dude right now. 
<laughs> you know it's coming. <laughs> right, here it comes. Here <laughs> it we comes. go. I'm like, hey, what's going on, buddy? And, and of course, it's always jovial at the very beginning, and it's always about business, and we always have that good relationship, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So that's where my pushing forward comes from you. When you motivate me into doing these things, because look where we're at now. You yeah. know what I mean? And, and it's awesome. It's it's good. Yeah. I know that when you call, it's good. Yeah. Plain and simple. You know I mean? appreciate that. And yeah, likewise, too, because yeah. that's the thing. It's just that everybody who's been there to help me out, mm-hmm. that's why. Like, I just have to pay it forward. Right. And, you know, it's so. Same here. And that's, and that's a good way to look at it. I mean, right. it could it could help, you know, inspire, like, you know, kind of bounce off everybody and right. get that motivation going. So right. Right. that's a good way to look at it. Yeah, though. no doubt. So, no oh, doubt. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Next, we're going to kind of lay out some gear, talk about Darren's gear, what he uses in day-to-day use, uh, go through some weapon systems, and uh, show out uh, Old Trusty. So. Yeah, Old Trusty. 